Tonight, the road to no mercy kicks into high gear as we determine the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, the phenomenal AJ Styles, the Viper Randy Orton. It is the rubber match months in the making tonight to determine who goes to no mercy. And also coming up later tonight in Hartford, Braun Breaker made a statement seven nights ago, but tonight he goes one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Ricochet, who's got a busy week ahead of him tomorrow at the Cruiserweight Classic, but tonight he's got his hands full with meaner than evil, Braun Breaker. We are live from the XL Center here in Hartford, Connecticut. And for the first time since losing his United States Championship at SummerSlam, the ring general Gunther walks down the aisle. The first blemish on the record coming just a few weeks ago in Levi Stadium. Tonight, Gunther returns with a vendetta front and center on his mind. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, representing Imperium from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 297 pounds, Gunther! Gunther now with a 14-1 and record after walking out of Levi Stadium, being handed his first loss by the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Of course, the United States Championship now resides with Cody himself, who retained the gold seven nights ago here on SmackDown against the one and only Ricochet. But for the first time since WrestleMania, the ring general Gunther walks down the aisle without a championship strapped around his waist. And you gotta imagine that Gunther is more fired up than ever tonight than to make a statement to the SmackDown locker room that that one loss is not gonna be the common foe, if you will, in the near future here on SmackDown. Imperium's intact, Imperium's looking short, but tonight Gunther runs it back with a man he did successfully defeat a number of weeks ago, that being Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano, who's looking to get that victory back and build some momentum towards his next round match in the Cruiserweight Classic in a few weeks' time. And his opponent, from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano! Johnny Gargano, a participant in the Cruiserweight Classic, which of course is live tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time from Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, week three of eight in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Johnny Gargano already punching his ticket to the quarterfinals a number of weeks ago when he defeated Akira Tozawa in the first round. He will meet Dominic Mysterio in just a few weeks in the quarterfinals of the CWC. But tonight, Johnny Gargano looks to avenge his loss to Gunther. In Gunther's lead up to SummerSlam, Johnny Gargano has not forgotten about a possible momentum derailing loss. And looking to run things back with the ring general tonight. But Johnny Gargano's got to be careful with that quarterfinal matchup coming up soon in the CWC. He does not want to be a stepping stone in Gunther's comeback and a matchup that could very well be a reminder of the SmackDown locker room just what the ring general is capable of. All remains to be seen, but Gunther not even bothering with the collar and elbow and a slow start tonight. But neither is Johnny Gargano, who springs off the ropes and a poison Rana to the ring general. Gargano came to play tonight into the DDT, the early cover. And even though Johnny Gargano, I'm sure, is well aware Gunther was not going to go down just yet, trying to get into the mind of Gunther. Gunther had to be an uncomfortable feeling getting his shoulders pinned to the mat for a three count for the first time since Imperium joined the main roster back in November at SummerSlam. But now Gunther back in action tonight. Hell-bent on destruction, to say the least. Will Johnny Gargano be a stepping stone for the ring general, or will Gargano build momentum towards his match with Dominic in the quarterfinals of the CWC? All remains to be seen tonight in Hartford. And don't forget, coming up September the 16th, Saturday night, is the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. Live from Baltimore, it is no mercy. And later tonight here on SmackDown, we will determine Drew McIntyre's number one contender for No Mercy, when it is the phenomenal AJ Styles battling the apex predator, Randy Orton. AJ 
Styles picking up a big win last week here on SmackDown against Jinder Mahal, but the last time he fought Randy Orton about six weeks ago here on SmackDown in Greensboro, North Carolina, it was Randy Orton picking up the victory. Now the two pass crossed once again later tonight in your main event for the opportunity of a lifetime at stake. We gotta focus in on what is taking place at ringside right now. Gunther all over Johnny Gargano. Ragged on him around ringside. And Gunther is out clearly to prove a point tonight in Hartford. This is gonna be Gargano's best strategy, trying to stick and move, create some distance between the whole shebang and the ring general. Gunther having none of it. The drop kick right to the heart of Johnny Gargano. Gargano down and out. And he may have a couple of weeks rest before he battles Dominic Mysterio in the quarterfinals, but momentum certainly on the line for Johnny Gargano tonight. Gunther, my goodness, delivering those bare knees to the side of the dome of Gargano. Whipping Johnny Gargano off into the ropes, and Gunther again. This is a mugging by the ring general tonight. He is coming into this matchup fired up, hell-bent, on destruction again to say the least after losing his United States Championship and being defeated for the first time a part of SmackDown just a few weeks ago at SummerSlam. The ring general's out with a mission statement tonight. As we mentioned, it was the first time he walked down the aisle without championship gold around his waist since February at WrestleMania. Johnny Gargano is feeling the brunt of it right now, but never count out the heart of the whole shebang who gets strapped with a big boot. Trying to mount a comeback there, but the ring general have it absolutely none of it. Gargano back to the outside, and Guther is on his tail. What does the ring general got in mind? Off the apron, very uncharacteristic of the ring general Guther, but that speaks volumes to Guther's vendetta tonight. Coming off the apron, squashing Gargano on the floor of the XL Center. And now Guther's going for that sleeper hold on the outside. He can't win the match on the outskirts of the ring. Sleeper hold or not, no, many no matter how many people have tapped out to this maneuver. But he can certainly do some damage to Gargano. And I think that's what Guther's got in mind right now. Gargano able to roll out of it. Maybe the change of scenery. He's really messing with the, the mindset of Guther, if you will. No United States Championship around his waist tonight. Will Guther's fury, his anger towards this matchup, be his own detriment as Gargano slingshot into the corner. And Gargano may have just stole this matchup, but elects not to go for the cover. Not underestimating Guther tonight. He may have been going for the Gargano escape which usually starts with that drop toe hold, but Gunther had it scouted, and just like that, in the snap of the fingers, double underhook powerbomb, and Gargano seeing stars. And another chop! Johnny Wrestling is gonna feel that one on Saturday morning. Sending Gargano out of the ring, and I do not know what Gunther has got in mind. He, there's a few times throughout this matchup that Gunther could have gone for the victory, but clearly, wait a minute, Clearly, Guther's out to prove a point tonight and send a message to the SmackDown locker room that one loss will not be the detriment to Guther's Friday night SmackDown career. Oh, this is beyond the means of the matchup. Johnny Gargano up on the announce table, and not by will, but certainly by force, and Guther slamming Johnny Gargano through the announce table. Absolutely an uncalled for maneuver by the ring general. This is not any no disqualifications matchup. This is a simple wrestling match that Guther has taken to the next level simply out of his own anger and fury after losing the United States title. And now back inside the ring, power bomb and stacks up Gargano with it. And you can probably count all the way to Gargano's quarterfinal match in the CWC because this one's over. Well, certainly a convincing victory tonight. And I think that's what Gunther was out to do. Remind Friday Night Smackdown and everybody who's got their eyes upon it that he is still one of the most dominant forces in the Blue Brand's history. Here's your winner, well, Johnny Gargano is going to have to pick himself up, dust himself off, and when it's time for his quarterfinal match in the Cruiserweight Classic, 
let this loss reside in the past. But tonight, Imperium is in full force, and the ring general, Gunther, gets another victory. Back in the win column is one of the most dominating superstars in SmackDown history. It is the continuation of the Cruiserweight Classic. It's coming your way tomorrow afternoon with this first round battle. Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate, takes on SmackDown submission specialist, Drew Gulak. And also coming your way in just 24 hours from Manhattan, New York, one half of Los Lotharios, Humberto Carrillo, takes on the one and only human highlight reel ricochet. All of that is coming your way tomorrow afternoon from Manhattan, New York, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. It is the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic. We are back inside the XL Center here in Hartford, Connecticut, and Bailey out with a mission of her own tonight. We want to take you back to last week, the eight women over the top rope battle royal to determine Shayna Baszler's number one contender for no mercy. There you saw Bailey getting sent for a ride up and over and out of the ring by hands of the EST, Bianca Belair. Of course, Candice LeRae went on to win that matchup and she will battle Shayna Baszler on the 16th in Baltimore, but Bianca Belair is here in the XL Center tonight, and she's got her eyes on Bailey in one-on-one -on -one action. And from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca Belair! But speaking of no mercy, Bianca Belair has got a vendetta of her own that she's looking to settle. The ballsy badass Shotzi turned her back on the EST a number of months ago, but now Bianca is back for revenge. It's Bianca Belair versus Shotzi. A lot of history between these two women, and they're gonna go head to head on the 16th of September in Baltimore. What a matchup that is gonna be. Bianca and Shotzi, prior to their run as a tag team, gained that mutual respect through battle, dating back to 2022. It was at last year's SummerSlam where Shotzi defeated Bianca Belair to become the WWE Women's Champion. You rewind the clocks back to February at WrestleMania, Shotzi in need of a tag team partner, and who stepped up? The EST of the WWE, Bianca Belair. Belair and Shotzi went on to win the Women's Tag Team Championships, which they would hold until about May and June here on SmackDown. And that's where things started to go downhill for that tandem. Shotzi blames Bianca Belair for losing the titles and blames Bianca Belair for trying to take her spotlight. It's as simple as that. Shotzi believes she is better as Bianca. She has beaten her in the past and was not going to allow this tag team to drag her down any longer. Her words, not mine, but Bianca Belair nonetheless wants her payback for getting sneak attacked from behind by the ballsy badass all those weeks ago. And she is going to have her chance. September the 16th, live Saturday night in Baltimore at No Mercy. Cannot wait to get to Baltimore, the SmackDown exclusive live event, but as for tonight in Hartford, Bailey, Bianca Belair, locking horns. Bailey looking for a little payback of her own after Bianca defeated her, or I should say eliminated her from that battle royal seven nights ago here on SmackDown. Obviously, Bianca Belair coming up short as well, making it to the final two, but ultimately eliminated by the woman who is now the new number one contender for Shayna Baszler's WWE Women's Championship, that being the Poison Pixie Candice LeRae. Now, Bianca Belair looking to refocus, if you will, get through Bailey tonight, build some momentum towards the ballsy badass meeting with Shotzi. Cannot wait for that collision. We know what those two women are capable of, as we mentioned. A lot of history between Belair and Shotzi that's going to come to a head. On the 16th, as Bianca Belair with a big time splash on Bailey. Imagine what this could do for Bailey tonight if she can upset Bianca Belair, really turn the momentum to her side here on SmackDown. It's been a while since we have seen Bailey in the limelight. A lot of that has to do with a, a lot of big time losses. Bailey was a member of the Elimination Chamber matchup earlier this year, could have catapulted herself to a title match at WrestleMania. Unfortunately, did not work out for Bayley. But tonight, here on SmackDown, we're going to bounce back from that Battle Royal loss last week against the woman who eliminated her, ended her chances at becoming number one contender. And certainly a win for Bayley tonight will not only derail Bianca Belair's momentum on the road to no mercy, but it could put Bayley in line for a future WWE Women's Championship opportunity. 
Now remains to be seen what's going to happen. As we talk about all the time, it's all about the wins, the losses, getting your hand raised by the end of the bell. And Bailey, so far, so good. Beautiful arm drag off the top, but not able to capitalize there. Bianca, so fast, so quick, so agile, and certainly has got the strength in her favor tonight. Bianca's going to the top. Bailey's a little far out. I don't like this decision making. Going for the 450, but you noticed as Bianca Belair went to the air, Bailey turned over on her side. Bianca crashes and burns off the 450. Now Bailey sending Bianca out of the ring once again, creating some distance. Bailey doesn't care how she gets a victory tonight. She'll take the count out. She just wants her hand raised. And you notice Bailey sending Bianca over the top rope. Just like Bianca did to her seven nights ago here on SmackDown. I'm sure that would be a nice little feather in the cap of Bailey if she can not only defeat Bianca tonight, but add some insult to injury, getting set over the top and a count out. Obviously, Bianca getting back inside the ring now, but don't really know what's going on in the mind of Bianca Belair's opponent tonight. I'm sure Shotzi is somewhere here in the XL Center looking on, scouting her former tag team partner, and held before that her former rival, Bianca Belair and Shotzi. Two women who have been intertwined over the last two years almost. But now it all comes to a head. In just a few weeks at no mercy. Bailey's down and out. Bailey's got to get back into this thing. The EST is starting to build momentum here in Hartford tonight. And Bailey really turned the tides off of that 450 miss by the EST. Really unable to capitalize as Bianca Belair has now taken the matchup in her progression. And she's starting to wear down Bailey. Realizes she might be a little far behind in the offense, if you will, in this contest. And now once again goes behind on Bailey. Could be looking to send her for a ride. Face first on the canvas. And now Bianca's heading back to the top rope. Bailey a little bit more in an opportune position. And Bianca hits the 450 this time without a shadow of a doubt on the delivery. And that'll do it. A big time win for the EST of the WWE, Bianca Belair, as momentum is on her side on the road to no mercy. Message sent loud and clear. Bianca Belair is coming for her payback over the ballsy badass Shotzi in just a few weeks. Here is your winner, Bianca Belair. It's the EST, Bianca Belair. Versus the ballsy badass Shotzi, September the 16th in Baltimore at No Mercy. It is the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event coming your way Saturday night, September the 16th from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, the 2023 edition of No Mercy. And several matches already lined up as the WWE Women's Championship will be on the line. Last week, the Poison Pixie Candice LeRae punching her ticket for the opportunity of a lifetime to take down the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, for the WWE Women's Championship of the World. We just saw Bianca Belair in action moments ago, and that was a successful outing by the EST. But will the result be the same when she goes one-on-one -on -one with the ballsy badass Shotzi? A lot of history comes to a head on the 16th in Baltimore. This matchup signed this week for the Cruiserweight Championship. Chad Gable has made his way through two-thirds of Legado del Fantasma, but will he go three for three when he battles the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, one-on-one? -on -one. And after Braun Breaker's attack seven nights ago, Cody Rhodes has accepted the challenge. It will be meaner than evil Braun Breaker himself versus the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes for the United States Championship coming your way on the 16th in Baltimore at No Mercy. And speaking of Braun Breaker, he's got his hands full tonight with the human highlight reel of SmackDown Ricochet. Ron Breaker laid out the gauntlet last week. Cody Rhodes took the bait, and Breaker's got an opportunity to seize the moment on the 16th at No Mercy. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Woodstock, Georgia, weighing in at 230 pounds. Ron. 
Let's take you back to last week on SmackDown. Cody Rhodes successfully defending his newly won United States Championship against the human highlight reel Ricochet when Braun Breaker hit in the ring, coming up from behind in meaner than evil fashion. And here's where the Annie really got up, if you will. The United States Championship of Cody Rhodes used over his own skull, a message sent by Braun Breaker. We call him the blue chipper of Friday Night SmackDown for a reason. A bright future ahead of Breaker. Whether we like his actions or not, he's certainly, over the last few months, put together a list of accolades, if you will, when it comes to victories here on SmackDown that proves his worth to be number one contender. Well, Ricochet's got his hands full in the CWC tomorrow afternoon, but he's itching for another fight tonight in Hartford. From Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! It's going to be a busy 24 hours for the one and only. Tomorrow, he gets one half of Los Lotharios, Humberto Carrillo, in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time from Manhattan, New York, in the Hammerstein Ballroom. But before Ricochet makes the trip to NYC, he has got business to take care of tonight in Hartford. He took Cody Rhodes to the limit seven nights ago, almost leaving the United States champion. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but Ricochet not taking too kindly to the attack on a man he respects in Cody Rhodes. Ricochet looking to do one good by the American Nightmare tonight, taking on meaner than evil himself, Braun Breaker. But I don't know if this is good decision making out of Ricochet to take this fight just 24 hours before his high profile first round battle in the CWC. All remains to be seen, but Braun Breaker, it is on the list. He will meet Cody Rhodes for the United States Championship in just a few weeks in Baltimore at no mercy. Tonight is about building momentum here on SmackDown. It was just two weeks ago on the final SmackDown before SummerSlam. We were live from Sacramento, California, and man, oh man, did Breaker make a statement on that night. Absolutely, sending a message to the SmackDown locker room when he defeated the show off Dolph Ziggler inside the solid steel cage after a summer worth of battles between the two men. And Ricochet almost stealing the victory over Breaker right there. Do not count out the one and only by any means tonight. As Ricochet gets Breaker off his feet, we're gonna take things to the sky early like only the human highlight reel can. Ricochet, this is a man who over the last 12 months here in the WWE has held the Cruiserweight Championship, has won the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic as well as the World Tag Team titles alongside Mustafa Ali. Ricochet now enters the CWC, and I'm sure the one and only would love an opportunity at the United States Championship in the near future, my goodness! Look at that high offense by Ricochet and the balance like a cat to land on his feet as he saw Breaker re-enter the squared circle. That is some of the talent that makes Ricochet so special. Off the shooting star, into the cover, only a one. You remember what happened last week on the CWC, the other half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza defeating Ricochet's tag team partner, Mustafa Ali, huge upset. Angel Garza moving on to the quarterfinals. Will Ricochet suffer the same unfortunate defeat tomorrow afternoon? All remains to be seen, but as tonight, Breaker hoisting Ricochet high in the sky. Obviously, Breaker with the strength and size advantage in this contest tonight in Hartford. And down goes Ricochet for letting the blood rush to the head just a little bit. Now Breaker sizing Ricochet up for a spear, but incredible athleticism by the one and only. Leapfrog over the opponent, and now cradles him up for the pinfall. Trying to steal the victory, not just yet. You know, it certainly wouldn't be good for the momentum of Ricochet heading into tomorrow afternoon, if not only does he take a loss to Cody Rhodes seven nights ago here on SmackDown, but he may be about to take a loss to Braun Breaker. Gets the kick out, but we'll see when this thing comes down to the result. A lot of momentum riding on the line, as always is, but especially in this contest, with both of these men already signed for high-profile matches in the coming weeks. But tonight is all about Ricochet, as we mentioned. Also doing one good for the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, who is not here at Hartford tonight. 
taking the week off after getting the United States Championship bashed over his skull by the man in the black, Braun Breaker. Breaker's got all the tools to be a success. He was gunning for Drew McIntyre's World Heavyweight Championship a few months ago. May have coming up short in his pursuit, but certainly came close to winning the big gold belt. This is a man who is also a former two-time NXT champion. In just a few weeks, could see his name in the lights as the United States champion, but Ricochet. Look at this over the top rope, taking out Braun. First the springboard moonsault inside the squared circle, then the action gets taken to the outskirts, and the one and only meets meaner than evil out there. The type of action you're only going to see right here on Friday Night SmackDown as Breaker now. Back and forth, the pendulum of momentum has been in this matchup and a big time belly to belly to the obvious lighter competitor in Ricochet. Great strength show by Breaker. Ricochet is on spaghetti legs. Breaker sizing him up at a spear that cuts the one and only in half. Will that do it? And it's only a two. A close call there. Ricochet survives, but for how much longer? Oh no, now it's Ricochet on the outside. And Breaker with athleticism and springs in those boots. Also with the capabilities to take things to the air, Braun Breaker a full package from bell to bell. And that is what makes Braun so da dangerous. You might not like his actions from time to time. You might not like his attitudes, but he has got every trick in the book. Size, strength, athleticism. There is a reason he has been pinned. The blue chipper of Friday Night SmackDown. He is going to be a man to defeat. And one of the pieces of Friday Night SmackDown's future, by all means. And Ricochet is struggling to get to his soles of the boots right now. Breaker just ragged on. Ricochet back inside the squared circle, meaner than evil on his tail. Go for the power bomb. Ricochet, sunset flip for a second of times in this match. Breaker not learning his lesson there. A little bit of the naiveness in the young competitor. Breaker's had a lot of success so far, but still very young in his career, and those are some of the mistakes that we see Breaker really utilize some of the times, or I should say, his opponents utilize from time to time. Breaker down, but his breaker out as Ricochet heads to the top. What a mood so from the air into the cover. But it's not enough to keep Breaker down. I'll tell you what, with Breaker signed on to fight Cody Rhodes at no mercy, Ricochet's got a big opportunity tonight. Put momentum in the Cruiserweight Classic aside for a second. If Ricochet can defeat Braun Breaker, one of two things can happen. Ricochet can either put himself in line for a shot at the United States Championship. Yet again, as he take the, takes things to the outside of the cross body, either Ricochet could be waiting for whoever leaves No Mercy as the champion, or Ricochet could possibly be added to the United States title match, make it a three-way dance. All remains to be seen. He's got to get the W first, but Braun Breaker not looking to allow that. Ricochet into the ropes, and Braun Breaker sending him for a ride. And again, back and forth this matchup has been since the opening bell. Credit where it's due to both incredible talents. Now Ricochet has got his eyes locked and should say Braun Breaker's got his eyes locked on. Ricochet, press slam, and down goes the one and only. And that will do it. Braun Breaker with the victory tonight here on SmackDown. And I'm sure Breaker is praying hoping that the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes just saw that display of talent and athleticism and meaner than evil could be your next United States Champion on the 16th of September. Here is your winner, Braun Breaker. Like him or not, that was an emphatic statement made by Braun Breaker. He is coming for the United States Championship. He is coming for Cody Rhodes. And that, wait a minute. Oma what is Omas doing out here at ringside? The Nigerian giant Omas is here at ringside and he's grabbed a hold of the one and only Ricochet. Well, wait a minute, you remember two weeks ago, live in Sacramento on SmackDown, Ricochet defeated Omas inside of the squared circle. And now as Ricochet is down and out, Omas is deciding to strike.
This is absolutely uncalled for, unnecessary, but certainly not good for Ricochet. Already going through this match with Braun Breaker. He's got Carrillo tomorrow afternoon in the CWC, but now he's getting manhandled by the Nigerian giant Omos. Oh, and into the ring post. I'd say we need some help out here, but who the hell is going to get in the way of Omos? Ricochet is absolutely helpless right now as he just gets ragdolled around ringside. Whatever the motive is, Omos laying waste to Ricochet tonight in Hartford on SmackDown. Well, coming your way next week in Providence, Rhode Island, Candice LeRae alongside her partner Indy Hartwell take on the WWE Women's Champion Shayna Baszler and Io Sky. An early preview for Candice and Shayna coming up at No Mercy. And what a matchup sign for the main event. Austin Theory blames the Rated R Superstar for derailing his momentum ahead of SummerSlam. Edge defeated Theory a number of weeks back. They're going to lock horns one more time. The Rated R Superstar, the superstar from A-Town and Austin Theory, one-on-one -on -one next week in Providence, Rhode Island on Friday Night SmackDown. But as for tonight in Hartford, it is time to decide the number one contender for Drew McIntyre's World Heavyweight Championship coming up on the 16th in Baltimore at No Mercy. The phenomenal AJ Styles itching for another crack at Randy Orton. Tonight he gets his wish and looking to seize the opportunity at hand. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the race, representing the OC from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, the phenomenal AJ Styles. So it was back in the King of the Ring tournament in June where AJ Styles defeated Randy Orton in the quarterfinals. The two men met yet again last month here on SmackDown in Greensboro, North Carolina, where Randy Orton would then defeat AJ Styles. So tonight is the rubber match of the summer. It's Styles versus Orton. One on one, but the opportunity has never been bigger. A first class ticket to meet the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre, for the big gold belt. The, the richest prize here on SmackDown, the World Heavyweight Championship on the SmackDown exclusive live event, No Mercy. Styles set for action, but here comes that cold-hearted Apex Predator. And his opponent from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton! Earlier tonight, we briefly mentioned that AJ Styles picked up a victory over Jinder Mahal seven nights ago on SmackDown. But it was a few weeks back at SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer, in front of a sold-out Levi Stadium, where that man, the Viper, Randy Orton, took down his arch nemesis once and for all, the Rated R Superstar Edge. And now Randy Orton looking to ride that momentum into this number one contenders match tonight, and finally get the one-on-one -on -one match for the World Heavyweight Championship that he has been waiting for for months here on SmackDown. Remember a few months ago, it was Randy Orton set to fight Drew McIntyre one-on-one -on -one at Money in the Bank for the World Heavyweight title, but a loss to Edge would then send Edge into that match, making it a triple threat. Randy Orton has not forgotten. Randy wants his one-on-one -on -one match with the Scottish Psychopath once and for all, and wants another crack at the big gold belt. Tonight is put up or shut up time for both Randy Orton and AJ Styles. One win apiece over the last few months. But this is not the only few matches that they have had this year. Remember back on January the 1st at the Royal Rumble, both men were a part of the Monday Night Raw brand, and Randy Orton was the WWE Champion. And on that night, Randy Orton defeated the phenomenal AJ Styles. A lot of history between these two men, but tonight the opportunity couldn't be any bigger as the main event is underway here on SmackDown. AJ Styles hide out of the gate. You know, we just saw a matchup moments ago between Ricochet and Braun Breaker. That was very much back and forth the entire way through. And AJ Styles and Randy Orton's matchups throughout the summer have really followed that same tone. You gotta wonder if that is what we are about to witness yet again tonight in the middle of the XL Center. All remains to be seen, but I'm sure the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre has got his eyes locked on this matchup. 
waiting to see who is going to stand across the ring from him in just a few weeks in Baltimore at no mercy. Of course, Drew McIntyre hot off the heels of retaining his World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam against the King of the Ring winner, Austin Theory. Oh, wait a minute, Styles over the top rope coming crashing down on the hopes and dreams of the Apex Predator. AJ not afraid to take this fight to the outskirts of the ring. Styles and Orton have battled all around ringside, all around squared circle, and they will do it again, certainly with the chance to meet McIntyre at no mercy. As we were mentioning, Drew McIntyre hot off the heels of that win over Austin Theory at SummerSlam. And speaking of Austin Theory, seven nights from tonight, Providence, Rhode Island, he looks to right the wrong in his mind. I guess that loss against the Rated R Superstar Edge a number of weeks ago. It's Edge versus Theory one more time next week here on SmackDown. A whole lot of momentum. We're going to bounce back. Are both of those men riding on that matchup next week in Providence? Randy Orton right now. They're going to get the upper hand of Ray J. Styles. Starting to pick up some momentum there. AJ not afraid to take it to the air if necessary. But Randy Orton not afraid to cut the legs out from underneath Styles, ground him in this matchup, and absolutely make him suffer on Orton's road to no mercy. Orton bringing Styles to his feet. As we mentioned, Randy Orton with that huge win at SummerSlam. Styles with that win over Jinder Mahal last week. Got to believe both their mentalities are riding a high right now coming into this match, believing they got what it takes. But they can't underestimate the opposer as Styles comes off the top of the frog splash, not watching the ring awareness. Randy Orton's boot underneath the bottom rope. And Styles, early on, could be going for a phenomenal forearm, but Randy Orton sidesteps it. Orton not having none of that phenomenal forearm. But AJ Styles not having none of the momentum shifting to the other side of the ring in this match. I have a feeling you're going to witness these guys push through some boundaries tonight, run off adrenaline, a test of endurance if need be. And how hungry both men are to become the number one contender to the World Heavyweight Championship. Orton sending Styles. Oh, might have been going into the ropes there, but Styles, momentum taking him out. Side the squared circle yet again. Orton just trying to catch AJ Styles. Charles Styles playing a game of cat and mouse, but Randy Orton gets the upper hand there. Styles with a reversal. This is exactly what we expected. Back and forth since the opening bell between the Viper and the Phenomenal One. As have all of their contests throughout 2023. Styles in the barricade. Randy Orton back. Inside the ring. I'm sure, the Viper would not mind a count out victory tonight. As long as he sees his name on the marquee come the 16th of September and fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. There's one thing we know about Randy Orton is he's not going to care how he gets there. Off the scoop and the slam. And AJ Styles pops his shoulder off the canvas. Randy Orton starting to change the trajectory of this contest. And Speaking about changing the trajectory, the neck breaker may have just put AJ Styles' hopes of becoming number one contender down the drain, or in stomping the life out of Styles. And now bringing him to his feet. Randy Orton not satisfied with the damage he's done just yet, but it has that cost him. A little bit of ego, a little bit of anger in the eyes of Randy Orton. Styles looking to take advantage. This time, squared circle, face first off the canvas, goes Randy Orton. And now Orton on the shoulder. Styles could be looking for that burning hammer. My goodness. No waste in motion tonight. Foot is on the gas pedal for both of these men. Orton up against the ropes, and Styles, however, gets sidesteps and once again sent over the top. Now Orton on his tail as this main event tonight in Hartford continues, and Randy Orton not going to be afraid to make things a little uncomfortable for Styles if necessary. On the outside, and Randy Orton, look at the strength, could be going for that elevation neck breaker, and it's exactly what he delivers. AJ cannot afford 
many of those maneuvers. We saw Orin hit that snap neck breaker a few minutes ago, followed up by those stomps to every region of Styles' carcass. Now AJ St oh wait a minute, Orton could be going for the RKO, Styles countered with a reversal by the Phenomenal One, and you want to talk neck breakers, look no further than getting dropped on the knee of Styles. And Orton gets the shoulder up, how close was that? AJ almost had him tonight in Hartford. AJ oh wait a minute, wait a minute, it's Austin Theory. Austin Theory's in the ring, and he's ambushing both AJ Styles and Randy Orton. I believe I heard a bell. This matchup's going to disqualification. Oh, wait a minute here. Austin Theory, he's going after both men. I don't know if the ref called for a DQ victory or threw the match out or what the hell Austin Theory's even doing inside of the XL Center right now. But he's got to it up for an eight town down. The man who came up short at SummerSlam just made a statement, but we still need a number one contender. Who's going to no mercy to fight Drew McIntyre for the world title? Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.